Hello everyone, it's Steve with Upturn Owners Club. Um, I found this web page where someone did a co compilation of all the um, carbon emissions by transport type. I thought it was very interesting. Um, so I thought I'd go over with you guys and give you the link to the actual page if you want to check it out yourself. There were a couple of things that were pretty surprising about this when I looked at it and that's what made it very interesting. And I thought they did a very good job of it. Now they all, they put the disclaimer and they understand that this is not a study where they systematically went through all of these things. What they did is they compiled scientific data, looking at um, various um, um, other papers that looked at the carbon emissions of these various um, transport modes. And they, and depending on how the study did it, they had different assumptions, so they're not exactly alike. But I kind of briefly went through the, um, went through their sources and bibliography and it passes the sniff test. Uh, but it's a lot of work to go through it really, really systematically. And this is not a systematic review, um, which is a very, very, um, uh, a very precise way of doing this. And someone probably should do a systematic review at some point, but I think it's very, very difficult to do a systematic review because the assumptions between the various studies are going to be widely different. But anyway, this is actually quite good. They do list the bibliography and they list their sources. So it's a they whoever did this did a very very good job. All right. So what they're doing is they're gonna do uh, basically cradle to grave uh, emissions of all these transport types, and they're taking into consideration how much does it uh, how much energy and resources and pollution does it take to manufacture and dispose of the device, and then roadway that means like if you have to build tracks or roads or parking lots that kind of thing maintenance and then direct operating uh, expenses and indirect operating um, expenses in terms of uh, emissions so they, they go into it a little further here and you can see here direct operations this is the environmental impact of the direct operation of the vehicle for example direct emissions at the pipe abrasion emissions from brake linings wheels road and overhead lines so that's like, you know, rubber emissions from, from the cars, that kind of stuff. Indirect is environmental impact of indirect operations, uh, provision of energy. So this is like for an electric car, there's going to be very little direct emissions, but there's going to be more indirect emissions because you're going to have to generate the power somewhere else and deliver it to the electric vehicle. Um, and then you also have to do the transport. You have to take into account the high voltage lines and transformation. Then maintenance, you know, how much um, upkeep is in there to, in the device. Then, of course, manufacturing and disposal, that's um, pretty obvious. And then roadway, this is um, construction, maintenance, and disposable of all the tracks. So these is roads, parking lots, tunnels, bridges. And, and, and if you're looking at rail, they're looking at the lines, safety walls, bridges, tunnels, all that stuff. And in, for in the case of air traffic, you have to look at the airport infrastructure, the runways, that kind of stuff. Okay, so they do all that. And if you go through, they have a little um, area here. And if you go through here, you can like click on this and it tells you, okay, these are the assumptions that they made. They assume that it has 19% capacity and that the electrical mix is based on uh, um, lignite. I'm not sure what lignite is. Mm, I'm guessing it's some kind of coal, uh, hard coal. Um, nuclear energy is 12%, natural gas 12%, renewables, uh, of which it is uh, wind, pho photovoltaic, biomass, and hydropower. And people are going to talk about if, you know, should biomass really be considered renewable? I'm not sure. And then these are the sources that they use to, to generate their data. Okay, so it's, it's quite well done. And if you look at this, uh, what you see is they say that by foot it's a zero. So they're... Obviously, their assumption is, is that they're not going to count the calories that someone burns um, in terms of emissions, because we know that human food uh, generates a decent amount of carbon emissions, like generating food for people um, generates like the whole farming industry generates a decent amount of carbon emissions and pollution. But they're going to say it's zero. And I think I agree with that because. Let, let's say that we lived in a world where people were barely getting enough calories and in order to walk or bike, you would have to eat more calories to do that. Then you would have, I think you should take into account the amount of ca um, carbon emissions that the food generation takes. However, um, in most developed countries, 
And in fact, I would say in most countries in the world, calorie deficits is not a problem. Like for example, in America, um, essentially no one is at a calorie deficit. Almost everyone is in a calorie excess and you, you probably need to burn off more calories than you eat already. So biking and walking is actually helping you get rid of the extra calories that you're probably ingesting all the time anyway. Um, and so it's not like by walking or biking, you would be eating more food than you already are. You're already eating way more food than you need um, to sustain yourself. So that's that's why by foot, there is zero um, manufacturer disposal roadway maintenance costs. Now, see, you could say, well, no, no, nothing in addition, um, because there's a lot of uh, roadway maintenance costs for people just to be alive. Um, but walking doesn't add any more to that. Uh, maybe they should have added a little bit to like maintain sidewalks or something like that. Um, but, you know, you can walk not on a sidewalk, too. So I guess that's why they go to zero. And then if you look at bike, you see there's manufacturer and disposal um, generates that much. And then road main, roadway and maintenance generate that much. So very little. So that makes sense. The, the best uh, in terms of pollution is by walking. Next is by bike. Then next is light rail overhead. This is basically subways that are not underground. Um, and you see mainly because they have a pretty high capacity um, the, by, you know, on a per person basis, it's going to be um, the, the cost of the overhead is going to be amortized over a lot of people. Then next is e-bike, which is why I think I'm a big proponent of e-bike. Cause I mean, I'm a big proponent of biking. Like, Walking is good for like up to a mile, maybe um, two mile. When you once you get to like past a mile, walking is pretty slow. Uh, biking opens up, I think, transport up to you know five six miles easily, and then e-biking um, makes ten to twenty miles pretty easy to do, um, and and it and it doesn't require a tremendous amount of fitness to to e-bike. And so that is a very, very low maintenance. And so you see here that the manufacturer for e-bikes is uh, quite a bit higher than for regular bikes, but the emissions for during operation is very low because they're very light. And then e-scooters, so these are just like, and I would say that many e-bikes, especially these fat tire e-bikes that they're selling now, they are essentially scooters. Um, and so, and this this bears out that fact that the, the difference between the two is not that great. Next is electrical bus, then underground subway, then a regular bus. And you see that uh, their, the cost of manufacture of regular bus is quite low, but their direct um, um, operations is, is quite high. Then there's high speed train and then tram. This is kind of surprising to me and maybe someone can um, figure out why this is the case. So tram, and and light rail they seem very very similar but for some reason the manu the uh the roadway maintenance costs are much higher on a tram maybe because they're sh the tram is sharing the roadway with cars and then their indirect op their indirect operation costs are also much much higher and i'm not entirely sure why that is because see this is this is light rail overhead. So this is like a subway. And then this is what they mean by tram. These are the things that I see like when I go down to San Diego. So there are these, these trams like this and they share the roadway with cars um, to a large extent. And for some reason that is a lot more inefficient than um, subways. Like it's, a, it's, it's like triple, it's a huge difference. Then next is a gas scooter and then a train and then electric car. So that's actually surprising that an electric car is pretty similar to a gas scooter in terms of efficiency. And if you look at the assumptions for cars, they assume that the average um, occupancy is 1.5 people, which I think is about right. Um, and then you do see that the manufactured disposable electric cars is this huge, um, the huge portion of its cost. And um, if you look at their assumptions, they're assuming a mid-size car like a Golf, and they're assuming that you're gonna have to replace the battery uh, one, like once every about 300,000 kilometers or 
0.5 times average in the life of the vehicle. And they considering the life of the vehicle, 150 kilometers. I think that's a very um, pessimistic assumption. I think most electric cars are going to last way more than 100,000 miles. So 150,000 kilometers is about 100,000 miles. And most people are going to uh, use an electric vehicle for much, much longer than that. And we know that there are Teslas out there with like 300,000 miles that are still on the original battery. So these are very pessimistic assumptions for um, electric cars. And yet electric cars still do uh, quite well. Here's the thing I thought was actually the most surprising. And these are these uh, little electric scooters that you see a lot in a lot of cities like Bird and Lime scooters. And um, they look like uh, these things these e-kick scooters and what what we what you find out when you look at these things is that the manufacturer costs are quite high and the maintenance costs are quite high and that's because um they don't last very long they looked at this shared scooters don't last very long people abuse these things and the average lifespan of one of these things is a month uh and so that is just not very efficient and what they do is a lot of these vehicles, they're picked up by gas cars and then taken to be charged overnight at certain places. So um, the infrastructure around supporting these things is highly inefficient. So at first when I saw these things, I thought, oh, what a great idea. Um, but they turn out to be very, very inefficient. And so um, I, I discovered I'm, I'm not a fan of those. And then this is, here's, a, here's um, an auto bus and then plug-in hybrid. And then there's a gas motorcycle, um, then hybrid car, then a ferry, and then diesel. And then like uh, the worst possible thing is a, is, a, is a gasoline car. And of course, this is the most common mode of transportation in the United States. So just think if we move a, a lot of this to this or this, that would be amazing amazing and this is based on if you look at their car assumption this is very optimistic assumptions for the car because they're assuming a golf size car so we know that most cars in america are large suvs and trucks uh, the, the the single best-selling car in the u.s is a ford f-150 and they're assuming 1.5 passengers car per per vehicle that's just like the electric car and um, they are, but they're assuming a very efficient small car. And even with that assumption, the gasoline car does pretty poorly. Okay, well anyways, uh, if you're interested in this, if you click on any of these, they give you all the assumptions and the, the studies that it's based on, and you can check it out for yourself. But I just thought that the most surprising findings for me were how these scooters are so bad actually and why a tram is so much worse than a regular subway and and what a huge difference like going from a gas car to like a bicycle and e-bike would be um okay well thanks for watching guys hopefully that was somewhat interesting i will link this in the uh, description below have a great day everyone